Today, at Ennis District Court, 144 homeowners have been served. For many, they are unable to afford a solicitor to represent them. Volunteer anti-eviction groups show up to offer their support and counsel. Uh, looking at the list, there's probably over 60 that it's their very first time um, coming here. Uh, probably six out of the 60 will show up. Um, the others just want to uh, come. They're drained of the much required energy uh, to even face this. Many have are going through huge levels of emotional pain. Um, you'll find that many of them have um, gone along the train of thought of suicide. As the morning unfolds, litigants are summoned one by one to face the court registrar and the bank's barristers. Afterwards, some were willing to tell their story. I want to do the best that I possibly can, but I don't want to lose my little home. There's 125,000 homes in, in trouble now, and that's central bank figures. 125,000 homes. So if you allow four people per home, and even if you were to say that 10 people directly are affected by that home because everybody has a mother and a sister and whatever, that's, that's 1.25 million people that will be displaced or upset by, by uh, eviction. It's been one week since the court granted a repossession order against Kira's home. Facing an eviction and unable to afford a solicitor, she has come to a volunteer centre in Dublin city centre called The Hub to research how to fight the case herself. Run by like-minded volunteers, lay litigants come to the Hub Ireland to share information and experiences with each other. Its coordinator is Byron Jenkins, whose own business was foreclosed by his bank. It's funny, when you come in first, you're so terrified by everything, and you're like really overwhelmed and in a crisis situation, really. I'm always meeting people down here who are either, you know, two or three steps ahead of me in the process and fighting more complex legal issues and then they explain something to me so that I get some clarification around that issue. Um, or I'm meeting people who are just beginning the process and they're terrified and I know what that's like so I'll reach out to them. Um, you believed it was on the 4th yeah. and it was heard on the 3rd. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to go back to the original call to get the recordings of that call and what was said in the court. 